Ooh, scruffy looking. Oh, princess, my princess. One of the three jewels in the crown of the original Star Wars trilogy. And finally, AMG have released not one, but two absolutely awesome sculpts for our beloved Princess Leia, which both marry up alongside two of her best portrayals in uh, Return of the Jedi. Hi, I'm Tom from Planet Mithril, and welcome to my How to Paint Princess Leia Organa in her Endor garb painting tutorial. That's right, I'm continuing my foray through the most recent Star Wars Shatterpoint releases, trying desperately to catch up before the next batch come out. The next bad batch? It's not going well. And I was super excited to get my take on Princess Leia in her Endor garb, uh, painted and ready for the tabletop. I decided to build my Endor Leia with her helmet on, mainly because as far as I'm concerned, if I'm painting one of Leia's hairstyles, it's going to be the cinnamon buns. As you can see, this is a super detailed model with some beautiful sculpted definition across her poncho and helmet in particular, which I'll be picking out with greens and tans as befitting the Endor scheme. Tied together with the smoother, flatter, more pastel hues of her trousers, which I'll be tackling in a real pale blue, which will act as an effective spot colour amongst all these natural colours. I'm going to be working off a grey undercoat, priming layer now using Mechanica Standard Grey. Well, as the good princess is clearly eager to get on, enough jabbering from me. <laughs> Brush is ready guys, and let's get painting. So I'm gonna start as I always do, and get my, all my base coats in situ first to really nail down those initial tones for the model going forward. The face, hands, and exposed forearms, I'm giving a base coat using pink flesh, a slightly warmer tone than I would usually go for initially here. The poncho and the trim around the outside of the helm, I'm going to be base coating in Ardennes Green. This is a lovely foresty green which will serve me really well as a base tone for all the natural colours going forward. The top and inner padded areas of the helmet I'm carefully picking out now using Arabic Shadow. I'm leaving the cups around the ears grey at the moment as these will be base coated with a different colour a little bit later on. The next step is to base coat Leia's trousers using Ladanis Grey. Now this doesn't cover too well in a single pass so you will have to apply a few thin down layers just to build up a nice solid coat. I'm going to be base coating Leia's boots and holster now using Eclipse Grey. Also at this stage, I've picked out her blaster pistol using Pure Black. I'm now going to very carefully pick out any leathers, belts and straps around the poncho and helmet using brown leather. The metal details now, mainly the ear cups I left earlier, I'm going to quickly give a coat using thrash metal. Awesome, now my base coats are in place and I'm happy with how they're looking, let's crack on and bring Leia to life. I'm going to start as I always do, particularly with character models, and I'm going to start with the face and all the skin. I just find this helps bring a lot of character to the model super early on in the painting process. I'm going to start by applying a recess shade to layer skin with a one-to-one -one mix of pink flesh and blood flesh crimson. I did thin this down with a little water just to desaturate the pigment slightly so I didn't end up with a bright pink princess. I'm focusing this in the recess facial details between the fingers and the lower half of the forearms facing the floor. Okay, so now my shade is in place and the shadow is built in, it's time to start layering up those upper tones. I'm applying a layer to all the skin now using basic flesh. The slightly less rich tone of this will really help the warmth of the pink flesh and crimson undertones shine through. Building up the upper details now, framing the face, nose and cheekbones, and defining the individual fingers and tendons in the hands. I 
I'm now applying a second layer over the skin with a one-to-one -one mix of basic flesh and harvester flesh. As you can see, I'm further defining Leia's quite sharp features, giving more shape to her cheeks, the brow and nose as the most prominent features on her face, and further defining the musculature of the fingers and arms. For the highlights, I'm going to be jumping to quite a stark tone now. I added in Moonray Flesh into the previous mix for the highlight stage. Now you can add as much or as little of this as you like, depending on how bright you want these highlights to finish up. You can gradually build up with small additions of Moonray Flesh as I did, which will hopefully avoid you oversaturating your flesh tones and ending up with too bright a skin tone. The eye recesses were then very carefully picked out using black. then two dots of white added either side, just to finish off the pupils. Finally, a thin line of orcish dermis was applied just to pick out Leia's lips. I wonder how many double L alliterations I'll end up with by the time this video is done. Now I know what you're all thinking. I can hear you screaming it through the YouTube comments. Tom, you're not doing Leia's camo. Like she had it in the films, it's definitely there. Yes, you are absolutely right. And I did entertain the idea. However, my reason for keeping Leia's poncho camo free is because I didn't think I could do the technique justice entirely uh, in the midst of a painting video such as this. Uh, I thought it was better to tackle it uh, in its own bespoke freehand tutorial uh, a little bit later on down the line. Or perhaps it is there, but you just can't see it. With that in mind, it's time to show you my take on Leia's Forest Fatigues. To start with, I'm going to apply an all-over shade with diluted Citadel Athonian Camo Shade, working this in between the very well-defined cloth recesses and trying to keep a uniform coat with minimal pooling. Okay, so now my shade is in place and thoroughly dry. I've made sure there's no blemishes, no pooling um, issues there going on. So now it's time to start building up the cloth. I'm going to start by applying a post-wash layer to the entire poncho with a one-to-one -one mix of Ardennes Green and Sherwood Green. I'm not adding more Sherwood at this point as it's quite a stark tone and I don't want to overblow the tone just yet. As you can see, I'm working on building up the upper layers of material, leaving the shade showing in the very well-defined recesses. With the helmet trim, I'm starting to focus this in two bands on the upper and lower part. With my mid-tone green now in place, you can see how well defined these folds of material are. By feathering my paint on over a few thin down layers, I can create a really seamless blend and really rich, vibrant, foresty green with minimal stress. The next stage is to continue building up these layers now using pure Sherwood green focusing slightly more on the upper crests and more prominent areas of cloth where the light will be hitting hardest. Now you can continue building up these layers with a few interim stages, uh, gradually adding in um, full green into the mix. Uh, the more stages you add in between, the more seamless your blend will be. I'm however going to jump right to the final highlight stage. So for the highlight stage, I'll be using pure full green and drawing this along the uppermost folds of material, the edges and trims of the poncho, framing the sharpest detail of the helmet. 
This will just really make the poncho pop off the model and draw your eye into the gorgeous, lush green tones you now have in place on there. Now with the poncho and greens now done on the layer, the majority of the hard work is more or less done, but now I'm going to move on to the helmet tan. To begin with, I applied an all over shade to the helmet and inner and brim with some heavily diluted Indian shadow. The inner helmet in particular has a very close texture, so this will just help lend it a little bit of subtle definition. The texture of the helmet needs me to be a lot more precise very early on in the process here, so make sure you've got a good point to your brush and make your application as careful and precise as you can be here. I'm going to very carefully be applying a post-shade layer to the ridges in the helmet, again using Arabic shadow. Brush control will be key here to making sure this layer goes exactly where you need it to go for the best overall effect. A second layer now was applied, this time using Iroko, jumping the tone up to a more burnished tan. Again, drawing this in a careful, targeted manner over the ridges in the helmet, framing the brim and creating texture across the puffy material that protects her neck and ears. Finally, a highlight was applied over all the tan with a one-to-one -one mix of Iroko and Thra Brown. This will only be applied to the upper curve of the ridges and just to make the edges and texture of the tan material pop a little bit more against all the greens. Now I'm moving on to the trousers, and probably what is one of the best names for a paint I've ever heard. Brain Eater Azure. Brain Eater Azure. It's awesome! As I did with the poncho material, targeting this in the recessed folds and grooves when the material is bunching up the reverse of Leia's legs. Ah, huh, there's another one. To create some natural shading. When I'm happy with the shading over the legs, it's time to build up again, this time by using a one-to-one -one mix of Ladanish Grey and Arctic Blue. I want a really pastel-y, washed out tone for the trousers here, which will stand out against the richer greens, tans and browns, which are going to dominate most of the model. This is followed by a highlight now using pure Arctic Blue. And again, I'm focusing this on the major stress points of the material where Leia's legs are pushing out against based on her stance. The boots, the holster and the blaster were given a thorough shade now with null oil. Shading these all together now just to save a little bit of time on drying. The edges of the boots, the holster and the blaster casing are now being framed using petroleum grey. I'm trying to be a little bit more precise with this here as I would normally be, given the leathery material of the boots in the holster. The light shining off them would be a lot harsher and not as blended or as soft.
an extreme edge highlight was then applied using rainy grey, again just reinforcing the framing of the boots, the outer curves of the holster and the harsh edges of the blaster framework. Okay, now I just have a few finishing details and Princess Leia is ready to hit the tabletop. The belt around her waist was given a quick highlight using walnut. As this isn't such a large feature on the model, you can get away with a single highlight just to help frame it against the greens. There are a few extra metal details on Leia that I left grey right at the start. At this stage now, I need to pick out the bracelet on her left arm and any metalwork on the blaster pistol itself, again using thrash metal. All the metals were then given a targeted shade of non oil trying not to bleed out onto any of the other finished areas. Finally, an extreme edge highlight was applied to all these areas using speed metal, just to finish our princess off. Your Shatterpoint sculpt from the Battle of Endor has been a true joy to paint. Lots of such characterful detail which have welcomed the warm embrace of the brush. The log and the base were painted separately, the method for which can be found in my Endor theme basing tutorial in my Shatterpoint playlist. And with that, Princess Leia Organa is ready to help the Rebel cause with an army of murder bears at her back fighting the tyranny of the Empire. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. I'll be back next week with what is probably going to be another MCP or a Middle Earth tutorial. I haven't quite decided yet. But until then, guys, take care and happy hobbying. Bye, guys.